Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel and welcome to bonus weather video number one for this week. We do these bonus videos every Tuesday and Friday and uh, they're primarily oriented along the lines of weather education. Uh, it may be uh, a little more than some people would like, uh, but for uh, I, I try to simplify it as much as I can and just give you a simple takeaway at the end of it, even if the prior information <laughs> didn't make a whole lot of sense. So today we're going to talk about something called the thermal wind. And uh, let's jump right into it here. And uh, I have to just move my cursor a little bit to be able to do that. Okay, so let's assume that we have a wind coming from the north at the surface of the earth, okay? And when we say there's a north wind, that means it's from the north blowing toward the south, okay? It's not blowing toward the north. The north indicates the direction it's coming from. Now, there's an arrow denoting that. At uh, 5,000 feet, about a mile up, let's say that we've got a northwest wind, and we're going to denote that by that arrow there. And so the thermal wind is the vector difference between those two vectors. Now, for those of you that remember way back in school, you talked about vectors and vector addition and subtraction. So we're going to just do a real, real simple review of that right now. So here's our north wind again. Here's our northwest wind. And if we want to see what the difference is between the two, we have to match up the two beginning points of those arrows and then the vector from the first one to the second one, from the endpoint to the endpoint, is the thermal wind, okay? So in a sense, what you're doing here is you're adding this vector here, okay, to the thermal wind, and then that gives you the wind vector at 5,000 feet, okay? And the thermal wind is basically, think of it as an isotherm. It's like a line of equal temperature with cold air to the north and warm air to the south. Okay, and that's what that is. That's what that arrow is, thermal wind, okay? So now, let's dive into this a little bit more. If we denote this arrow or equate that to the thermal wind with cold air to the north of it and warm air to the south, and we have our north wind at the surface and our northwest wind in the upper atmosphere, what did that surface wind have to do as you go up in the atmosphere to get to be like the northwest wind at 5,000 feet? Well, it had to rotate, okay? And it rotated about 45 degrees counterclockwise. So in that situation, if the wind turns counterclockwise with height, we call that backing with height. It's backing up, if you will. And we associate that with what we call cold advection. Uh, in other words, the wind is advecting colder air uh, in the direction of where the warm air is. And so if you're in between the two, you're getting colder with time. And you can sort of see that. If you think of this arrow, the thermal wind as being an isotherm, a line of equal temperature, and the winds are blowing against it like that, then the cold air is going to advance or advect farther toward the south. And the opposite is true as well. Let's suppose that we have the thermal wind with cold air to the north, warm air to the south, but this time we have a south, south wind at the surface and a southwest wind in the upper atmosphere. And what did that surface wind have to do in this case to get like the one at 5,000 feet? It had to turn 45 degrees clockwise. So we call that clockwise turning veering with height, and that is associated with warm advection. And again, you can see the way those arrows are oriented is that it's allowing cold air to retreat and warm air to come in and replace it. So if you were to look up in the sky someday and you saw two different cloud layers and you could differentiate that one was higher than another, and you saw them moving in different directions, you could actually take a look at that and say, okay, is the wind at the lower level veering or turning clockwise as you go up to that second level of clouds, or is it backing or going counterclockwise? And then that would tell you that in that layer, you've either got warm advection or cold advection, depending on what's going on there. So anyway, I hope that's the simple takeaway about backing and veering and cold advection and warm advection. Uh, hopefully, you don't have to worry about any of the other stuff, okay? All righty, that's it for today. We'll have another bonus weather video coming up for you on Friday and another daily weather update coming tomorrow. We'll see you then.